thank you very much for everyone for being here tonight. We're glad that you're joining us. Uh, well, make sure we welcome visitors. I know we've had a couple of uh, a couple of weeks in a row at least with some visitors. So always welcome the visitors when they're coming through. It's always encouraging for them. Let's stand and encourage one another as we sing our praise to Jesus tonight. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather be Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hands than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway i'd rather have jesus than anything this world affords today i'd rather have jesus than men's applause I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd, ra I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be a king of a vast domain or be held in sin. Dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. He's fairer than lilies of rarest bloom. He's sweeter than honey from out of the cold. All that my hungering spirit needs, I'd rather have Jesus and let him be than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than. This world affords today. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together tonight to encourage one another. Help us to be welcoming as a church, uh, to reach out to those that are uh, new here, maybe visiting uh, on their way through, maybe somewhere. We pray that you would uh, also bless us this evening. I pray that your word would be spoken truth and that we would uh, honor and glorify you in everything that we do tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Yes, thank you, Jason, for that. We sure to appreciate that. All right. Good evening. I hope that you are having a wonderful week serving the Lord and following the Lord and just being in love with your Lord and Savior. It's such a blessing to be a Christian. It's great to be in church. It's great to be with you this week and just got a few announcements for you. Uh, and as I'm reading the announcements, Brother Sam, if you could make your way with the letter towards the front. Uh, we just got a few announcements this evening. Uh, first of all, let me welcome, like you were saying, any guests. Good to see Roman again. This is He's back again. Thanks for visiting with us, Roman. We're always grateful when visitors are with us. Uh, we want you to know it's a blessing for us to have you here, and I pray that we're a blessing to you. So thank you, and God bless you for being here this evening. I think that's all the visitors uh, that I can see. Everyone else pretty much comes on a regular basis. So all right, praise the Lord for that. Except Michaela. It's good to see Michaela too. All right, um, just a few announcements. Um, last night we had ladies' Bible study. Joy, how did ladies' Bible study go last night? What did you teach on? Forgiveness. Ooh, that's a good one and a big one. Christianity, it's based on 
forgiveness and reconciliation that's what it's all about so praise the lord for ladies bible study uh we need ladies to teach ladies how to live the christian life and that's always a joy and a blessing no pun intended on your name uh but it is a joy to have such ministries in our church also uh tomorrow night at the nelson's house there'll be a teen activity and a devotion uh, if you have any questions about that please see the nelson's or Haley hancocks and she can give you any information you need to know about tomorrow night what you need um, Sunday, of course, we'll have Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. like we always do, and then the main message at 10.30 preaching service. Now, again, uh, um, after that, we'll, we'll be back on track. We won't have any guests in, so hopefully I'll be able to finish about 11.30-ish. Okay, we'll put the ish on there. And then from 11.30 to 1, take a break. Go get lunch at Popeye's. Go get lunch at McDonald's. Bring a lunch. Go downstairs. Go home if you're fairly local. Invite another family that's not local to go to your home. But we're going to be back here at 1 o'clock. We'll have a, a, a lesson, if you will, a teaching time, if you want. I'll probably preach. I always say I'm going to teach, and I wind up preaching anyway, on child rearing and the family and children in the home. That'll be at 1 p.m. Everyone's welcome. Uh, there's no in, uh, exclusion. You're more than welcome to come. Um, but if you're a 90 year old widow lady and you don't feel like you really want to come to a child rearing class, I get it. So, uh, that'll be at 1 PM this Sunday and for the next, uh, few Sundays in a row. So that'll be the child rearing class at 1 PM. That will not be online. It will not be recorded. So it's either you're here or you're not. And so that'll be at 1 PM. Um, last week's offering. Thank God for the offering. I always, let me be very honest. I try to remember to always mention the offering, but I, sometimes I forget, but it was uh, very high. And to God be the glory last Sunday was $8,572 for the middle of the summer. If you know anything about church giving, the middle of the summer has a tendency to go and so praise God for such a, a faithful offering. Monday, Monday through Friday, VBS starts this week. Heroes in Haiti, uh, August 15 through 19, ages 5 to 12. It will be from 10 to noon. And there's a special truck coming on Friday. I won't say what kind of truck it is. It's not a monster truck. It's not a semi truck. But it makes little ding ding noises and music. So you figure it out. Um, all right, and so we'll have special uh, trucks showing up on Friday. Okay, I think, um, I think I've got all my announcements. And then get ready. Can I get two guys ready with microphones to share testimonies and encouragement? Sam's going to read a letter, and then we'll uh, go into that. And then we'll do our last song after we give uh, testimonies and praises and thanks. Okay, so the letter tonight is from the Malazos. Now, we've seen them twice uh, recently. They were here just a... Uh, week or two ago, and um, so uh, they have five children, and there's uh, Micah, and Matthias, and Shirley, and Emma Joy, and Allison, and um, they, uh, they've had a very interesting summer. Uh, they're thankful for safe travel. Uh, they've managed to uh, go to seven new churches, uh, and I believe it means that they got, yes, so seven new churches have actually committed to partner with them. So they're now at 96.5% of what their allotted or decided amount is. And then um, Sandra's dad um, had cancer or has cancer, uh, but they've had treatments and um, he, they believe that he will be in remission shortly. So that's a real blessing while they're here. Um, and passports, they've got some passports that they needed, and they're just waiting for one so we can pray for Allison's um, passport. Let's see, Allison is the youngest. And um, they've had a good chance to go to a number of conferences. They actually went to a wedding of some, a couple that was really helpful to them here in Canada. Uh, they've gone to men's retreats. Um, the end of, I'm going to say the end of June, um, no, maybe, maybe in July, I, I forget the timing, but Micah and Matthias went to Uranium City in Saskatchewan to help prepare uh, a camp there. Uh, the Pathenroths had been there for 30 years. I remember them, if any of you uh, remember um, Mark Robertson that was in Churchill. He went to Uranium City after Churchill 
and he worked with the Path and Ross at that point before he went on to um, yeah, Yellowknife. But anyways, they went there, and they were supposed to stay uh, for Beacon Bible Camp, and the whole Malazzo family was supposed to go there for that. He was going to be the speaker. But there was an unfortunate drowning of a seven-year-old, uh, a granddaughter, actually, of the Pathenroths. And um, that was very uh, traumatic for Micah and uh, Matthias. And uh, the family did not go uh, to Uranium City. So it was interesting. That happened shortly before they were here. And we didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that at that point. Um, and, you know, it didn't show on them. Uh, they were very um, great servants when they came. Their music was wonderful. And, um, but they're looking forward to a VBS and a teen camp. I believe that's probably the Winkler teen camp at the end of August. Um, and uh, so they've got lots of ministry. And Micah is actually going to be at uh, Canadian Baptist Bible College in Winkler starting in September. So that's another hard thing for the family because uh, Micah has been a very strong assistant to his dad, uh, almost essential to his dad. And so his dad's going back to the to Philippines without him. So Matthias is going to have to come you know, and, and show his stuff. Uh, but that's good. You know, that, that's a growing process. Um, and then um, they've had a lot of, how do we say, cultural. It's hard. They're Filipino, but they're Canadian. And, and, and they're not Filipino, but they've lived in the Philippines. And, and now they're in Canada. And it was mentioned of something called third culture kids. You know, they're in between. They really don't know who they are. And, and, it, and it, it, it's hard for missionary children when they jump back and forth. It, it, furlough is almost a bad thing in some senses because it, it disrupts them and moves them around. Um, the last thing I want to mention is Sagoda, which is the place uh, that they minister in, which is in the north part of the Philippines. It's a, a tribal area. And the leadership that is there now taking the place of the Malazos are experiencing a lot of persecution because they have decided to keep the church going because the people around say, what are you doing? You know, why are you doing that? And, and it, it seems to be very bad. Um, but also there's been earthquakes and the roads that the Malazos use to get places right now don't exist. Um, Hopefully, they'll be back in, in shape by the time they get back so they can, they can travel. Uh, so let's pray uh, for the Malazzo family. Father, we thank you so much uh, for this family. Um, I was encouraged by them being here. Please encourage them. Give them people to encourage them and, and encourage them through the ministry that they will have at VBS and teen camp and be with uh, Micah as he stays behind when they leave, uh, probably... Uh, by the new year and um, just give um, wisdom to uh, the father uh, for his family that he might lead them in the right way and uh, th thank you in Jesus name amen please tell me the name of the family what? hold on Jason uh, the name of the family again that uh, the child Pats and Roths are the, are the, oh, the parents I'm looking for the parents of yeah, the child I'll, I'll find it I'll find it what is it well, weebs, weebs. Okay, That's thank correct. you. Please remember to pray for them. Okay, yeah. thank you, brother. Okay, oh, can let's. I, can I mention one thing? Yeah, quickly. I won't be here. Yep. Um, I talked to Ian Wood today. Okay. And um, I believe it was the wedding of Louise's son. Okay. Uh, happened on the weekend, and my figure may be wrong, but 60% of the people at the wedding got COVID. Okay. And one lady is in Holland right now because she can't go to Thailand because she. Okay. You know, so pray for Ian All right. and his family, please. Okay, thank you. We will. Um, yeah, let's ple please pray for the Wee family that lost their child. I mean, just think about the magnitude of that. They've lost their child, and, uh, and they're hurting right now, and they need your prayer, and you need to pray for them, and we need to pray for them. Uh, I'd like to take just a few minutes. If we have microphones, anyone like to give testimony? Also, did every household get one of these today? 
Everybody, who needs one of these? You did not get one of these. Each family, not one, you know, per person, but one per household. Did everyone, does anyone need one? Raise your hand. Everyone's got one. Okay. These are the new books. Please thank Paul, Conrad, and um, is Megan here tonight, Connie, or no? Okay, Megan, uh, she's working at Cedarwood Bible Camp, and she designed these, so please thank these folks for all this information uh, just to put in the hands of our guests and our, also our, our own people and newer members and things like that. It's really nice. It's a good, very concise package of uh, Victory Baptist Church, if you will. And, and by the way, if you see something that needs to be tweaked, just let me know. Come see me, and if something needs to be changed or if something there's there or you have a question, please let me know, and we will do that in our next version okay okay does anyone have a testimony or word of encouragement a praise god or something along those lines yes joy let's start right here with the mic right here my house is officially sold today your house has sold no turning back no turning back <laughs> amen praise god yes uh, okay for those of you who haven't heard this yet um Somebody else didn't want to speak, so I'll have to say it. We who were coming home from Bible study on Tuesday. Who was driving? I was. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, we might not be here. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. So, <laughs> anyways, we were coming home from Bible study on Tuesday. We dropped off Ruth and Frida, and uh, we were coming down Main Street. It was dark, and out of nowhere, this goose came out and hit our windshield, shattered the windshield, glass all over us. Uh, praise the Lord, we only had a few very minor cuts or whatever. And, um, well, it was could have been so much worse. I, I was amazed at how much damage a stupid goose could do. But the reason I say that is because this isn't my first altercation with a goose this summer. But I won't say, I won't talk about that. Anyways, thank you, think, you Lord, you for protection. You think these birds are demon-possessed or what? <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. It's dead. The demons are out. <laughs> His goose is cooked. Amen. So, all right. So what's for dinner for the next month at your house? Goose sandwiches, goose steak, goose turkey. You know, amen. D goose dumplings. Amen. Yes, sir. As most of you are aware, um, Marlene's had issues with her right eye since the end of um, May. And uh, it's, a, it's called six cranial nerve palsy. Anyways, mm. make a long story short. Uh, as of this morning, she, she's noticed that if she looks a certain way, she can see one image. If she looks another way, it's still double, but it's starting to uh, come around. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That is such good news to hear. Uh, we are grateful the Lord brought you all our way. And so, amen. It's been good to get to know the three of you. Amen. All right. Anyone else have a blessing? Yes, sir, over there. Um, we um, w went to a funeral today of a lady in our community. Um, I don't think anybody here knows the Del Bolo or the Dick family that live on Assiniboine Avenue. Um, their children did go to uh, WMES for a period of time. Um, but it was good to see the community. Uh, these are the people that lived on the river uh, during COVID year, uh, making ice rinks and sculptures and you know, and this is the family that made that happen. Nice. Uh, just a, a simple word. I put a, set, a, a new tract in my pocket uh, today. The one, three things you need to know. Uh, it, it's, it, you've made it. Uh, it's for Victory Baptist Church. I know the three. one, yes. Okay. Is there a God? Uh, it, Has he uh, spoken? It's a very good tract because it's not, it's not, it, it's not strong in the sense of boof, you know. It, it's a very, it's a very gentle tract, I believe, okay. and I, I like it. Um, and uh, but I had an opportunity to talk to a man that has separated from his wife right now, and um, we sort of know them. And so I managed at a funeral to give a tract out. It, they're hard things to do at a funeral, yes. and, I, and I wasn't expecting to give many out, but I was prepared. And this gentleman, we just had a little chat that made me say hey take this and read it amen so scott is his name and uh, he still lives in our neighborhood that's and, a good uh, time though sam on a note for, for put this in your files and i don't uh 
when a great change is happening in someone's life, that's the time they're more tender to the truth of the gospel. When someone passes away, when someone's getting married, these are the times that folks seem to be more spiritually receptive than ever. Any other, when they're about to have a child, these are the times folks have a tendency to be more receptive. So I told him that if he needed anybody, pastor would love to talk you to betcha. him or right. he can come and talk yeah. to me so 100%. you know it was just it was one of those things if you're not ready it doesn't happen amen but if you're ready it, it can happen be ready always be ready i'm not always ready i uh, know we none of us are but we should keep working anyone else yes so last thursday i brought up a name for a prayer request um, of a friend from my past named isma right and yesterday her and i got to have a quite lengthy text message conversation and uh, it was told to me that uh, in 2019 she went to Israel with her family for a trip and uh, among seeing other um, things uh, where Jesus walked in the Garden of Gethsemane or in mm -hmm. the empty tomb she got baptized in the Jordan River so I asked her if it was explained to her what baptism meant and what it didn't mean she said that it was but um, when I asked her when she got saved um, and if it was out there or before that. And she says she thinks before, but... Okay. Uh, yeah, but it, it appears evident to me that the Lord's actually doing work there. So, so you think your friend is actually saved? I hope so. The lines are of communication are open between her and I now. We haven't talked okay. in a few years. So okay. um, hopefully um, I can get an opportunity to meet with her and expo show her from the Bible, like... Amen. What salvation she is. She may just need assurance of herself. Praise God. That's good. Pray yeah. for Isma tonight when you think of that. I have two blessings I'd like to share. First one is today I got to spend some time with my favorite youngest child, Jessica. And so we went out and handed out leaflets for vacation Bible school. I just love doing that kind of stuff. So we, we went to several different streets, put all kinds of flyers and writing folks out, got to talk to a few folks and things like that. And so that's always an encouragement to spend time doing that kind of stuff. And the other one is I got to spend uh, just a day and a half or so away with my wife and spend time with Brian and Cheryl and that was always awesome so we had a great time thank you for a wonderful time so those were my blessings so amen all right anyone else have a blessing or word of encouragement these are good okay all right Jason would you come and lead us and Haley would you come and we sing another hymn to the Lord all right let's stand and sing in his time In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. In his time, Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way that you do just what you say. In your time, in your time, in your time, you make all things beautiful in your time. Lord, my life to you I bring, may each song I have to sing be to you a lovely thing in your time amen great singing please be please be seated all right we're gonna look at uh we talked about uh just some app you know truth and decisions and principles last week today we're going to talk a little bit somewhat adjacent to that idea so let's go to second timothy chapter two Second Timothy chapter two. I'll get a couple guys ready with microphones. We'll get a few folks to read. Second Timothy chapter number two. I'd like to see some new folks participate in reading if you would. Uh, I know that Jason and, and Daryl and Louise and Ruth and Buford and Marla and certain folks, but let me encourage some of you other folks to get involved in, in, in participation and reading when we do our Bible study together on Thursday evening. Second Timothy chapter number two. Let me read to you uh, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says this. Thou therefore my son. Again, Paul writing to a younger preacher. Thou therefore my son, spiritual son. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 
and the things that thou hast heard of me, me meaning Paul, among many witnesses, the same commit thou, thou meaning Timothy, to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others others also let's pray father thank you for the words of god thank you for the time that we have each week thank you lord for the wonderful blessing of being a member and a part of the local church and the transferring of truth down through the ages until you come in jesus name we pray amen i just want to share another blessing before i get into it did you all see how many visitors first time visitors we had sunday does anyone have a total, Don, Bridget, either of you or somebody else, know how many in total visitors there were? No, there are a lot. There were a lot of visitors. I asked them specifically because they get the cards and they type them in and the things like that. And so um, that was a miracle that we had all those visitors this Sunday. And let's just keep praying that to God be the glory and that we'll be able to be able to have more visitors to be able to teach them. This verse 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 is my life's verse for missions work. It's the verse that I put on the back of my missionary card. Every missionary often puts a Bible verse as their key verse that they like to use. And I kind of use this 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 2 as my springboard verse that this is what I wanted to accomplish while serving God on the foreign field. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able, able to teach others also and so we have a picture here of the transference of truth and I'm going to start this lesson with a visual demonstration so I'm going to need some boys to come up all right I'm going to get you three guys to start we'll start with you three one two three come on up yep Colt Talon yep come on Kale all right I'm going to need one more guy one more guy come on no I know come on it's okay I'll, I'll let you off this time all right Rush why don't you go up to your brothers we'll just make it a Nelson night see that's what you guys get for not being here for three services in a row all right you go off to camp and have fun without me what's up with that okay so all right you stand there Rush then you, you switch places where where is Errol where's Errol okay all right okay so we got these four guys okay if you read the verse there was a man in the Bible, and his name was Paul, and the Spirit of God was upon the apostle named Paul, and Paul wound up, wound up preaching the Word of God, and because he preached to the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, uh, he reached a young boy whose name was Timothy. Uh, I wanted to say Titus because that's what I've been preaching on Sundays. And Timothy was raised in a Christian home. His mother was a believer. His grandmother was a believer. His father was a heathen, but he wound up being a preacher. Side note. You don't have to grow up in a picture-perfect Christian home and God can still ring your bell and get a hold of you and use you for God. That was a divided home. His mother was a believer. His father was a heathen. But he went into the ministry and his name, Timothy, is in two books of the Bible forever. And so he, Paul preached to Timothy and Timothy got saved and then Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, when you were a little kid, you watched me. When you were a little kid, you heard me. When you were a little kid, you got saved, my son in the faith. In other words, the implication is that he, Paul, is Timothy's spiritual father. By the way, when you lead someone to Jesus Christ, you are their spiritual parent. Do you understand the responsibility of that? Now, some may orphan and run away, and there's nothing you can do. But look up here, please. If you lead someone to Christ, you are responsible to attempt to take them as far as they will spiritually allow you to go. Does that make sense? And so he took him as far as he could. And then God got a hold of him and called Timothy to be a pastor. And so Paul said, I want you to take everything I taught you and everything I showed you and everything I taught you from the word of God. And I want you to pass it on to faithful men. These would be the men that Timothy would lead to Christ. These would be the people that Timothy would entrust with the same truth that Paul started and brought down the line. And so these faithful men would be able, they would have the capability, the knowledge and the know-how to teach others also. These would be the others also. Do you understand that? That's an amazing thing when you lead someone to Christ who winds up leading others to Christ and they go on. That's God's plan for the centuries and the ages. 
This is a beautiful thing. And so what truth has to be done, it has to have a starting point, and it has to be transferred from person to person, touching lives. And by the way, I'm for you putting John 3.16 on your Facebook, but please don't think that counts as your witnessing. That's not your witnessing. That's just a wonderful blessing that God's word's up on the wall, the digital virtual wall. You are responsible as Christians to share your faith. Please don't think it's just Pastor Paul's job and Pastor Timothy's job. It was to teach other, uh, faithful men, didn't say they were pastors, to teach others also, didn't say they were faithful or not, but to continuously keep reaching and preaching and teaching and telling and sharing and growing because truth must be transferred. It has to be transferred. All right, guys, for now, I'll let you go ahead and sit down. So what are the things that we're to be transferring? What is the truth that we should be teaching? We're to be teaching the subjects called doctrine. I know I've been hitting that a lot lately, but you know what? I'm telling you, please, in Jesus' name, I am beseeching you right now. If people would know their doctrine, they won't get sucked into these silly, silly, silly circuses called church doctrine i remember now wait a minute let me tell you there was a day when i was not a preacher i was just a young like these three i was just a young guy that got saved that came to church and that preacher get up and say the word doctrine doctrine like oh my word you're so boring i remember thinking those thoughts when he would say doctrine hey but look up here doctrine is a fence that will keep you out of a lot of trouble if you know what you believe you won't be in these three ring circuses shows and rock concerts and silly your doctrine does matter doctrine makes the difference doctrine will divide doctrine will deliver it does matter what you believe and so these are the things that we're to teach can i get someone newer to to participate my burden is to get everyone involved in this church as much as possible and so i'm asking is there anyone that would like to read that commonly doesn't always read now don't be gun shy i mean i know i can get <laughs> that's cheating like, the, you totally have taken away the spirit of the law and taken it to the letter of the law, right? Yeah, give the mic to the letter, the, the letter of the law guy, all right? Okay, there you go. Ho, hum. All right. <laughs> Isn't it fun? Come on, we have church. We can have fun in church. All right. Romans chapter 16 and verse number 7. So we're going to the book of Romans. Everyone turn there. I'm sure that you're all there, but I haven't been doing too much preaching. Romans chapter 16. And let's go to verse number 7. Number 1, what is the truth we transfer? Teach some doctrine. Romans 16 verse 7. When you're ready. Romans 16 7. Yes, Salute sir. Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who were in, who were in Christ before me. Okay, I think I dropped the ball. I... Uh, I think I read the wrong. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. You know what? It's 17. Sorry, Russ. I just, you know what? I didn't type in the one in front of the seven. It's 17. Romans 16, 17. So if you read Romans 16, verse 17, please. Yes, sir. I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Okay, thank you. Now that makes a little more sense here, doesn't it? Now, we're to teach and transfer our doctrine. Now, Paul is writing to the believers, the born-again believers in the city of Rome. He says, I beseech you. That means I am begging you, please, 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 on my hands and knees, please, brethren, answer my question, everyone together. Brethren, saved or lost? That was kind of weak, guys. I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's a 50-50 chance here. Brethren in the Bible, saved or lost? Okay, I am begging my fellow Christians to do what in verse 17? I'm imploring with you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses. You don't want to be the problem church member that causes divisions and offenses. Contrary. Now, there's a time to divide. Stay with me. There's a time to offend. But contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. You see, doctrine does matter. I want everyone to say that. Let's say that together. Ready? Say it. Doctrine does matter, and it is our job to teach them the doctrines of God. Let's talk about our basic doctrines for a minute. Just bullet point me. Hit me right now. What's one Bible doctrine, one belief that we hold to? Absolutely. Jesus is coming back. 
eternal security. Once saved, always saved. I know a lot of churches that don't teach that. I know churches that don't teach Jesus is coming back. They say we're just going to be here forever and sooner or later it's all going to fix itself. It's called amillennialism. It's wrong doctrine. Baptism waters can't save you. What can wash my way my sin? The power in the tub. No, baptism water cannot save. Do you understand that most churches that say they're Christian say that baptism does save you? That's false doctrine. You say most people believe it. Most people are wrong. And most people didn't get in the ark. Think about it. All right, yes. Uh, salvation by grace through faith. Now, you all know your doctrine here. Anyone else got a doctrine? Yes. Inspiration of the scriptures. Absolutely, positively. Go ahead. You were going to say the Bible. All right. Okay. Yep. Absolutely, the virgin birth. The virgin birth of Christ. Do you understand people have taught that Jesus was the illegitimate son of a Roman soldier? That makes him a born sinner just like you and I. They teach that in seminary, that nonsense. Yes. Jesus is coming again. Maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, maybe soon, but Jesus is coming again. Yes. The Lord's Supper is a a biblical teaching that we hold to that it is imperative. It doesn't get us saved as the Catholics, our Catholic friends teach, but it is a doctrinal practice that we hold to. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> the pre, pre, prefix pre, before the tribulation trouble, the Jewish trouble, Jacob's trouble, pre-tribulation, rapture, rapture, snatching, catching away, catching up of the born-again saints. I am looking for the blessed hope. I am not looking for the mark of the beast. Say amen to that. These are doctrinal truths, and you need to know them because they will keep you from going astray into a weird church, to a weird belief system. Yes, The Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. These three are one. Who doesn't teach the Trinity? Name a religious group. Somebody, just one. Give me one. Who does not teach that? Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons. You both said it. It was like Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons. It came at the same time. All right. Catholics teach that the uh, Lord's Supper is part of your getting to heaven. Who teaches that water can save your soul? Just name a group that believes in water regeneration. Say it. Catholics one, who else? Who, Anglicans two, who else? Probably the Mormons believe in baptismal regeneration, who else? Yes. Uh, Some of the Mennonites, not all the Mennonites. There'd be some weird Baptists that would teach that kind of stuff too. Hey, listen, you need to know what you believe. And guess where you learn it? You learn in church, yes. Ah, that's replacement theology, that's right. Yes, did you have your hand up or you just, okay. These things are what we hold to. These are the things, not only do we hold to them, they hold us up. And Paul said, transfer that truth to the faithful because the faithful will make sure that others also hear these truths. People need to be set free and good scriptural doctrine will teach them uh, what to believe. And that is why we have a teenager class. And that is why we have ladies Bible study class. And that is why we have men's meetings on occasion. And that is why we have different uh, new members class for a three week crush, uh, concentrated course so that we can get the basic doctrine so that we don't get shaken in what we believe. And we know we're right because we can see it in the scripture. Number one, teach doctrine so what are the other truths that need to be transferred now i know this is technically hair splitting is doctrine also but uh let's go to galatians 1 8 can i get someone else besides russ to read (laughs) galatians chapter 1 verse number 8 galatians chapter 1 and verse number 8 can i get someone to volunteer yes denise galatians 1 and verse 8 wait for the mic give it a tap Okay. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Okay. Now, the gospel is the starting line. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel is to be taught not necessarily to those of us. We are to teach it to the lost and dying world. Grace, you're responsible. Are you saved? You're responsible to teach the lost and the dying. You say, I'm just a junior high girl. You're responsible. Arrow, you saved? You sure? 
Okay, you are responsible to the best of your God-given ability to share the gospel with whoever and wherever you can. You are responsible. You're responsible to share your faith with the lost and dying world. Teach the gospel. Teach the gospel to people because they need the gospel. Did you know that 100 years ago, if you went to the Presbyterian church, you'd get the right gospel message? Not the right baptism, but the right gospel message, how to get saved. Do you know 100 years ago, if you went to a Methodist church, you would hear the truth, you must be born again, and it would be the right message? Did you know that even the United Church of Canada, at one time in the early stages, would teach the true and living gospel, and you could get born again in those churches? How many of you can just raise your hand and tell me, you knew some United Church folks that believed the true gospel and were saved and truly were born again as much as you and I see several hands there was a day and there was a time I don't believe it's as clear as it was now the waters are very murky and muddy today the congregationalists were great gospel preachers and it is very important that we as Bible believing Christians pass down the truth from generation to generation to generation spiritually so that the true gospel is preached until the day of the rapture hallelujah if we're going to keep presenting the gospel and passing it down, we're going to need people to be willing to share the gospel and teach the gospel and transfer the truth of the gospel to lost people. I'm so glad that somebody took some time and showed me, a Catholic drug addict, how to be saved. How many of you are glad somebody told you you need to be saved and showed you how to get saved in a living way? Let me encourage you, don't be the end of the line. Don't be the end of the line because it stops if you stop. Don't be the end of the line. You say, I can't, I can't, I can't. I know you can't, but you can hand something to someone. There's enough on this paper. You've got to start believing that again. There's enough on this piece of paper to snatch a soul from hell. It's not in my notes, but I just feel impressed to share this, and I have impressed it. Some of you will remember this story. Guy was just downtown, Methodist guy, handing out gospel tracts outside of a Navy base. And a sailor walked by, and he just went like that. And the kid took it, went back to his bunk in the barracks, or not the barracks, whatever they call it in the Navy, in the squad bay or whatever. He sat down. He read the track. He said, I got saved because some Methodist guy who didn't say a word, and I read that track, and I'm telling you, he said, I got saved. Long story short, he got saved, and he got on fire. He got in a good church. How many believe the same God that saved you can steer you to the right kind of a church? Hallelujah. He got in the right church. He got plugged in. He met the right kind of gal. A saved girl loved the Lord. The two of them got married. They surrendered to missions. They went off to Papua New Guinea. They won people to Christ in Papua New Guinea because somebody stood on a street and just handed out a gospel track. You don't have to be a talker. You can give somebody a gospel track. Buford's not a talker. He gives out thousands of tracks all the time. All the time. You can give the gospel to somebody. Teach the blessed gospel of Jesus Christ. Teach the doctrine to you, Thursday night people, the solid uh, bedrock of the church people. Teach the gospel to the lost and dying world. If we teach the gospel and reach the world, God's work will grow. So, now I know that I can't get everyone to be a loud mouth and to take control of every situation and be spirit filled and be a soul winner, etc. I understand that at first, but you can continuously grow. Let me encourage you, we've said this before, even if you can't tell people, be a friend bringer. You just get them here and we'll get them saved. Somebody will get them saved. You get your friends here, we'll get them saved. We'll, sh we'll at least tell them how to get saved, present it to them, and then they can make that decision. You get them here. Be a good friend bringer. Even if you're not a good talker, be a good friend bringer. How many of you, and this is re redundant, I, rhetorical, I know the answer. How many believe in this church? This church is doing the will of God at this time. All right. How many of you are still excited about what's happening around this place? Will you say amen? Okay. Let's believe in what God's doing here and keep bringing new people and new blood into this place because Jesus still saves in 2022. Amen? People can be saved. So let's be really good friend bringers 
and let's keep encouraging people to come. My prayer is that uh, you be good friend bringers, and then we need to become personal soul winners. I've taught on soul winning. I'm not teaching that tonight, but if you're going to share the gospel, you're going to need to be a personal soul winner. That's where you are winning people to Christ outside of our church. Um, I've been challenged a few weeks ago with the thought instead of praying that I would be leading people to Christ and I have led many people to Christ over the years that God will raise up soul winners in our church that I won't be the only one that God will raise you up to become soul winners to share your faith and to to get uh, more uh, comfortable with and spirit filled and that you become a soul winner I'm praying that God's going to give us 20 personal confrontational individual soul winners now don't be scared by the word confrontational confrontational just means you're asking the questions if you were to die today are you 100 percent sure you go to heaven do you know for sure you'll be in heaven it doesn't mean you're in their face arrogantly like i get excited and things like that but it does mean that you're asking the hard question are you going to die and go to heaven are you going to die and go to hell that you won't be timid in these areas and so we need to be confrontational in sharing our faith. If God gave us 20 confrontational soul winners, the building would be jam-packed, I believe it. I do. Transference of truth. Paul taught Timothy. Timothy taught faithful men. Faithful men taught others. Teach the gospel. Teach doctrine. And then air, number three is this. Teach with urgency. Teach with an urgency in your voice. All right, let's, can I get two people to read? Someone to read 1 Timothy 1.18. And then John 7, 46. Can I get someone to volunteer for 1 Timothy 1, 18? Okay, Jessica, 1 Timothy 1, 18. Is there anyone that's never read before that'd be willing to read today for the first time? You will do this. You will do this. Uh, 7, 46. John 7, 46. Anyone that will volunteer tonight? Bev reads, and I am thankful, Bev, but I'm gonna look for someone. Have you never read in church before here, since you've been here? Okay, yes, that's my goal. I've accomplished my goal tonight. All right, you get John chapter 7 and verse number 46. John chapter 7, verse number 46. Who Jessica's going to read to us right now. She's going to read 1 Timothy 1, 18, when you're ready. This is the charge that I commit unto thee, a son of Timothy, according to the prophecies, which went before on thee, that thou by them my mightest war be a good warfare okay thank you for that and so i want you to see jessica thank you for that this i charge when when, when that's a military term that i charge thee i am challenging you and i commit unto thee timothy the prophecies which went before on thee that thou be by them mightest war a good warfare Paul is telling Timothy, I am charging you with the task of retaining the prophecies so that you can fight a good fight, so that you will war a good warfare. People don't like this Bible terminology, but according to the scriptures, please understand, as nice as the Christian life is and as beautiful as it is and as wonderful as it is, and there is no other life but the Christian life, in my opinion, it's still a warfare. We're still at war. Till Jesus comes we're at war against Satan and the demons and the devils that rule and reign on this earth we're at war for the souls of men so that they don't leave this world without Jesus Christ it is a a, a battle and so uh, we're gonna continue to charge people to take the work of God very seriously all right John seven forty six. when you're ready brother John seven forty six says the officers answered never met Never man spake like this man. Never a man. Read it one more time. Okay. The officers answered, never man spake like this man. Never a man. Thank you, brother. Never a man spake like this man. I guarantee you when Paul said to Timothy, I charge thee, he did not say, <clears throat> I charge thee. I don't see that. I see passion. I see urgency. I see imploring him. When I hear the verse that Anthony read in the Gospel of John, they're looking at each other going, never, never a man spake like this man. His words were important. His words were urgent. How many understand when God speaks, it's probably urgent that we listen. 
So we're number one, to teach the truth of doctrine. Number two, we're to teach the gospel of the lost. But number three, the how-to is we're to speak with urgency. There needs to be, once again, a sense of urgency. When you're in a war, there is always a sense of urgency in the midst of a battle. Many years ago, there was a pastor in Texas who was being attacked by the government. His name was Pastor Lester Roloff, and uh, he had a theme song when the government was trying to throw him in jail, and they did throw him in jail, by the way, for a while, for helping kids who came from broken homes and all messed up. And he had a song that went, run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. If you knock me down, I'm going to get right back up. Didn't start out to play. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. It's a fight and not a game. So run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. You know that song, don't you? I'm watching Jessica sing it, right? He was a horrible singer, but a wonderful preacher. You know that song, right? You must have heard that, right? Anyone else knew that song? Oh, you guys all, all you guys know? Wow, I'm shocked. You guys don't know that? Oh, no? Wow. How, how many know the name Lester Roloff? Yeah, okay, all right, that's better, okay. But he said, this is serious business. It's a battlefield, brother. It's not a recreation room. Too many congregations have turned church into a cool recreation room, but we need to remember that it is a battlefield for the souls of men and women. By the way, the battlefield's out there. It's not in here. We're on this, we wear the same color T-shirts. We're on the same team. Battle's out there. The battle's out there. Infighting will destroy the army of the Lord. The battle's out there. And so we need to teach with an urgency. Many years ago, I used to love to go down south to the old camp meetings and uh, hear Bible preachers. And I dragged my uh, 20 year old, 21 year old wife to one of these meetings. And this wild man came out from Mississippi and he's preaching up a storm and he's screaming and he's standing on the tables and he's waving his hand and he's jumping up and down. You say, I don't like that. Well, that's a sense of urgency. That's a sense of urgency. You understand if this building is blazing on fire, it is your responsibility to pull. And some of you, uh, are, are, never mind, uh, pull the alarm, set the alarm, and it is your responsibility, it is your God-given human responsibility to shout, fire! And let everyone know the building's on fire! You don't stand there walking. <clears throat> May I have your attention, please? The building's burning and you're about to die. Would you please exit as slowly as possible? No, no, it's time to lift up your voice, raise up your voice, and shout fire. Shout fire. Get a sense of urgency again. We need to do that. It's imperative that we do. We don't have to be nasty, and you don't have to shout every time. And um, I remember a man, his name was Richard. I won't tell you his last name. He lived in Indiana. He was uh, in the nursing home, and he was screaming and yelling, and there's about five old ladies, and they're half deaf anyway. And he's, you're in here because of sin, and you're going to hell because of sin. That's not the time to have the voice of urgency. That was stupidity. God wants us to know the what's and the when's and have discernment. Some of you fishermen understand there's a certain bait to catch a certain type of fish. There's another bait to catch another type of fish. But if you want to go fishing, you have to know what to put on the hook. What I'm trying to say is there's a time to be very urgent. There's a time to be calm with the 90-year-old ladies about to die. But we need the sense of urgency where they go, whoa, no man spake like those people down at that Baptist church. And I've been to a lot of churches and all I hear is religious lectures and speeches and rap songs and poetry, but I never heard no one spake like they do down at the Baptist church. And so we need to get that sense of urgency again. We need to get back to a sense of urgency. Number one, teach your doctrine, teach it well, teach it clear, teach it true. And that is why we have the discipleship booklets. How many of you been through discipleship one, two, three, and four? Raise your hand. Okay, not enough. The teenagers have. All of you should have been, right? Put, all right, let me get, do that again, guys. If you in the teen class, everyone, you've been, through, you've been through books one, two, three, and four. Ladies Bible study group have all been through one, two, three, four. My goal is for everyone to get through that. You will get your basic doctrines in those discipleship booklets. That is called discipleship, and that will help you to reach and teach to others also. And so it's just going to take some time, but eventually we need to get that down so that we can know our doctrine and we can be sound in our doctrine. And so those are why we go through the discipleship booklets. I would have no problem whatsoever on Thursday night 
if three quarters of this room were divided up into pairs of two and one was teaching and one was learning and then there was just a handful of other people that I would teach the Bible, a Bible study to because that's number one, building the teacher, but number two, it's building the new Christian also. And we would all, when you keep teaching, you keep reinforcing what you know to be true. If you keep teaching your doctrine, I don't know how many times I've taught people those basic Bible d discipleship booklets. I've done it over and over and over, and I never get tired of it. How many, uh, how many people get tired of, they never get tired of watching golf? They never get tired of baseball? They never get tired of watching football, hockey? Same old sport, same old number of players, same old puck, same old ball, same old goal post, same old stuff, and they never get tired of it. We should never get tired of the work of God and the truth of God, and the lost souls that need to hear from God. So we need to teach our doctrine, we need to teach the gospel, and we need to do it with some passion in our souls. All right, does anyone have any questions? I know that I got a little preachy tonight. Yes, or comments, questions, or challenges, yes. Turn the mic Green on. Mic. Green mic. Mic on. So it's not a, a challenge or a, a question or anything, it's just a comment. Um, a bit of a testimony and a blessing. Okay. Um, when you said, uh, asked during your um, teaching about how many people here think that God's doing a work here and everybody raised their hands or whatever. And you also talked about, you know, spiritual warfare a little bit. Well, okay. Um, when I first started, like, actually taking my prayer life seriously before I started coming here, like, I started to feel a lot of, like, unsettledness. And then when I, when I finally came to this church and the, the nights that I spent in here overnight by myself praying one of those prayers was that um god would you know raise up this church and do a good work here or whatever and you know i got attacked with anxiety like no other for that like an entire year that went on don't but pray I, that's what the devil's telling you don't pray don't pray i'm coming after you but i mean all those prayers that that i prayed at the altar when i was here by myself at night i mean on sunday there was a couple that walked in and they were looking around for a seat when I first started coming here, they like, were looking for what? They were looking around for a seat, where to sit, because the place it was almost filled up. Amen. And I mean, when I first started coming here, I mean, it was right after what had happened there. Sure. And I mean, you were pretty distraught and stressed about that, and you know, your outlook was seemed very dire about the future of the church here. But I mean, now look look at it here. God's I mean, good. Amen. It's, it's almost full up now. <laughs> God knows what He's doing. He yeah. sure does. He sure does. Michelle and I were talking about filling up again um, it's not just it's not only about filling the room in the building it's about people being rooted and grounded in the long term but it is exciting when it was full I mean if, if just like three other families that were here that were normal I know you guys were camping and stuff and that praise God for that but um, if there were like three or four other families that were normally here we would have hit over 200 Sunday easy that's all we needed was like Nelson's are nine right you guys are nine right and then we were talking about um Dexter and Eileen, I always say their last, how do you say their last name? Panga? Panaligans were here. That would have put us up, you know, and there was like two other families. You said if those like four families that regularly come every week were here, we'd have hit 200. We're going to do it. It's going to be soon. It's not going to take too much long to God be the glory. So amen to that. All right, somebody else. Somebody else has a blessing or a question. Yes, right here, or a challenge or anything. I just, um, those discipleship books, I've been working through them at home on my own okay. and uh, sort of using them as like a devotional in the morning and that's great absolutely loving it and i recently um have um prepared a, a binder with originals in a binder yes so the the whole set is ready for photocopying right so if anybody uh is is in need of a copy um I, I can help with that. Okay. Here's my th qualifier, though. You are, like, handling that administratively, and that's fine that you're doing that, plus you go to ladies' Bible study. But I would prefer, if somebody wants one, that you see me so that I can pair you up with someone to go through it. It's not just the curriculum. It's the transference of truth, like we talked about. That's why I reference it. But thank you for mentioning the discipleship book. They are ready to go, and if you need to do that, I will pair you up with someone that would be willing to do that. I want everyone to be praying about being willing and those being willing to go through them also. All right, excellent. Thank you, Bridget. Anyone else? Questions, comments? Yes, sir, up here. He's coming with the mic now. A dumb question. Nope. There's a lot of churches today 
so-called evangelical Christian churches okay. that are no-name brand. Okay. A Baptist church basically teaches Baptist doctrine, which we believe is Bible, King James Bible doctrine. Sure. The Mennonites t teach a Mennonite doctrine. The Catholics teach a Catholic doctrine. Yes. The no-name brand, does that mean they have no doctrine? Is that what that means or what? Uh... It means they won't commit. Okay. They won't, they won't commit to this is who we are. Um, not the, the, the phrase that Don is referencing is often non-denominational. Um, non-denominationals can go from anything to almost baptistic like us to charismatic to old school Pentecostal. They're trying to hide who they are by just saying victory church on the sign. And what happens is, oh, oh that sounds nice. It's more palatable. It's more approachable. When you stick the word Baptist up there, people go, Pfft, right? But here's the thing. Once they come in the doors, they're going to figure out what you are anyway. If you're a rock and roll show and you don't have a, a non-denom on the sign, they're going to know you're a rock and roll show. If they come in the door and they know that you're Calvinistic, it's going gonna, it's gonna to reek and permeate through the teaching. If you're charismatic, it'll come out within two weeks. They'll turn around and go right out the door. So, and the, it, 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 I wouldn't break fellowship with a guy who was independent, fundamental, and he was King James, but he didn't have the word Baptist on his sign. I think he's wrong. I don't think it's right. I think labels do matter. Uh, my label is Jerome. I think I know that. And, and you know, and my, Michelle's label is Michelle. And we have labels. Labels do mean something. And I used the illustration not too long ago where I have two cans uh, or two bottles and, uh, and they look identically the same and you take the, and, the, and the liquid inside looks the same and they're both clear and one is spring water and the other is poison. It would be nice if somebody put a skull and a crossbones on the bottle that says poison so that you don't drink it. So, I, you know, labels do help. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything every time. Good question. I think it's fair. And doctrine does matter. All right. Anyone else? Your doctrine is your skeleton in the body inside. You can't see it, but you sure are grateful you have a skeletal system. All right. Anyone else? Good comments, good questions. Okay. We will see you.